I've been holding back my desire for children because of you. You're defective. Those words, like a dagger to my heart, were spat out by my husband of twenty years. I can't do this with him any more. My husband is already lost in the farce of our marriage. Surely God must have been watching for this devilish act. That's why my husband did such a thing. My name is Kate. I'm forty-five and I work as an office clerk at a law firm. It's almost been twenty years since I married my husband. We've lived modestly as a couple. We truly wanted children, but it didn't happen. The problem was more on my side, so while working, I went through treatments, exhausting both my mind and body, as well as my finances, but with no success. When I turned forty, I decided to give up. My husband wanted a child until the end and urged me to continue treatment, but I had reached my limit. Enduring the pain only to see our savings dwindle was terrifying. After all, we need $200,000 in savings for retirement. It felt wasteful to pour in any more money. Why don't we stop the treatment and live as a couple? Since we don't have children, we can save money and indulge in some luxury trips, I suggested, and my husband agreed, although he looked at me in difficulty. From then on, we decided to enjoy life as a couple. Still, when I see pictures of children on TV shows or New Year's cards, my heart feels conflicted. Even now, five years after stopping the treatment, I still carry the guilt and shame of not being able to have children. Then one day I decided to attend a class reunion for the first time in about ten years. My husband told me to take it easy for once, so I decided to stay overnight near the venue. It felt like a little vacation. Come to think of it, I've only gone out alone a handful of times since getting married. I was mostly consumed by infertility treatments. It's okay to indulge myself occasionally. Arriving at the venue, I enjoyed conversations with old friends. Kate, long time no see. How have you been? You seem to have lost some weight, haven't you? Indeed, I have lost about 10 kilograms over the past 10 years. I envy you. Since getting married and having children, I've gained 15 kilograms. I felt a little prickly in the midst of my friends, otherwise an interesting conversation. Kate, what about kids? Yeah, couldn't have any. It's just me and my husband. Sorry for asking something weird. No, it's okay. Let's enjoy ourselves. I behaved cheerfully to not make it gloomy. By the way, our son was a victim of marriage fraud the other day. Huh, fraud. I widened my eyes at the words of my classmate. Yeah, that's right. Well, it was an attempted scam, though. They wanted him to lend them $20,000 because they were getting married. What? What happened then? Since my son couldn't pay the $20,000, he consulted us parents, and we found out about it. In the end, the woman disappeared after that. That's a scary story. There are some really outrageous women out there. It's truly terrifying. Marriage fraud. It's a bit surprising to hear something like this happening so close to home. This son, now that he has a new girlfriend, his parents are relieved. The class reunion progressed smoothly and eventually came to an end. I didn't join the after party and return to the hotel alone, enjoying a solitary drink. Come to think of it, I haven't contacted my husband. It's only 10 p.m., so he should still be awake. I dialed the number to our home. However, no matter how many times I rang, my husband didn't answer. Has he already gone to bed? Well, it's fine since I'll be going back tomorrow anyway, but I had a strange feeling. Is it what they call a woman's intuition? Somehow, I had a bad feeling about it. Since then, my husband's return home on weekdays has become extremely late, and every night he comes home drunk. Hey, I'm home. You come home so drunk. Are you okay? My husband was drunk, and as soon as he took off his shoes, he sprawled out in the living room and said, Shut up. Your husband's home. Show more respect. How am I supposed to respect you looking like that? While thinking this to myself, I picked up his discarded socks and shirt. Emma was cute, wasn't she? You should be more like Emma when you were young, too. 
What's he talking about? Who's Emma? What does he mean by be more like her when you're young? Before I could ask, my husband had already fallen into a deep sleep. Could he possibly be cheating? That unsettling feeling I had that day intensified. No, my husband is a serious person. He wouldn't do something like that. It's probably just drunken nonsense. I kept telling myself that, but my husband continued to go out on weekends from morning till late at night. I'm going out for a bit. Take care. And he'd come back drunk as usual. If this keeps happening every week, even I, as patient as I am, would have to say something. It seems like you've been going out drinking every day lately. Are you financially okay? Shut up. What I do with my money is my business. It's my savings from when I was single. But if we don't save up for retirement, we'll have trouble in the future. You can save up. I spent a lot on treatments. That's because you're defective, lol. Even though he's drunk, saying something like that is just... I gradually began to notice changes in my husband. Was it because I became more submissive after stopping treatment? My husband had been increasingly making derogatory remarks towards me. Since you can't have kids, show me your affection instead. He would say things like that and behave selfishly, wasting money, and I could feel my affection for him dwindling. He used to be kind to me, working with me and supporting me when I was going through a hard time with treatment. I wonder if such a husband will ever return. What exactly is marriage? I started pondering this after 20 years had passed. But then things suddenly started to change. Kate, I need to talk to you. When I returned home from work, my husband was sitting on the living room couch with a solemn expression. What is it? You're being so formal. I want a divorce. What? Are you kidding me? Why are you suddenly saying this? I never dreamed that my husband was considering divorce. I certainly thought we needed to rethink a lot of things as a couple, but I hadn't thought about divorce. Had my husband been considering it before me? Why are you suddenly talking about divorce? I asked my husband for an explanation. You know, we've been married for 20 years, right? Let's sort things out properly. But my husband looked at me with contempt. You really are clueless, aren't you? He sighed heavily and glared at me. What do you mean? You know I've wanted to have children for the past 20 years, and I've been deprived of the opportunity to become a parent because of a defective woman like you. Have you ever thought about how I feel? My husband said, tapping the desk condescendingly. When we decided to stop treatment, we discussed it together. I never agreed to that. I've been wanting kids all this time. Then why didn't you talk to me about it? I felt sad and frustrated, tears threatening to spill over. Well, if you divorce me, I won't say anything anymore. Just quietly stamp your approval on the divorce papers. With that, my husband pushed the divorce papers across the table toward me. I actually already have plans to remarry. Remarry? With a 20-year-old girlfriend. Girlfriend? What do you mean? Were you cheating? I wouldn't do something like that. I'm already planning to register our marriage right after divorcing you, he said proudly. My husband getting married to a 20-year-old. It's absurd, isn't it? Emma is gentle and cute. She's the perfect wife, unlike you. Emma, the name my husband mentioned that day. A woman's intuition isn't to be underestimated. I admired myself a little for that. No, it's not the time to be admiring myself. Then my husband showed me a picture of the cute Emma. As I looked at it closely, I felt like bursting into laughter. Is he kidding me? I can't believe this is happening. What's wrong? My husband noticed my unusual behavior, but I quickly regained my composure. I felt it was too early to reveal anything, so I quickly put on a serious face. Well, it seems you really want children. Yeah, since you can't have them, there's nothing we can do about that, right? You'll agree to a divorce, won't you? Yes, it seems inevitable. I put on a slightly exaggerated sad face. Indeed, when my husband first brought up divorce, I felt sad, but as I grew more and more disgusted by his foolishness, divorce seemed like the right thing to do. 
Yeah, it's probably best to part ways with someone like him sooner rather than later. It almost feels like even God would say so. I stamped my approval on the divorce papers and left my husband. He'll probably regret this soon enough. Well, I'll just watch from a distance for now. About a year after the divorce, I heard a voice calling my name as I returned from work. Kate, please help me. A shabby-looking man approached me. Who are you? I was genuinely confused as I didn't recognize him. It's me, Kate. I need your help. It was my ex-husband. Legally, he's a stranger now, isn't he? Long time no see. I couldn't hide my surprise at how much he had changed. His cheeks were sunken, and he looked unkempt. Please introduce me to the lawyer at your company. Huh. Why are you suddenly asking me that? Apparently, my ex-husband was in financial trouble. I had imagined as much from his appearance, but I never thought he'd turn into a completely different person in just one year. The first consultation is free, but if you hire them, you'll have to pay legal fees. I don't have that kind of money. Please help me. What happened? Reluctantly, I decided to listen to my ex-husband's story at a nearby cave. Well, you see, before my ex-husband could speak, I interrupted. Did that girl, Emma, believe you? H, how did you know? Just as I expected, my husband had shown me a photo of a girl named Emma, and it clicked. The girl in that photo looked exactly like the woman who scammed our classmate's son at the reunion. Our classmate had been showing her photo to everyone, saying, I can't forgive this woman. I think her name was Amy or something, and she was 22 years old. Well, the name and age were probably fake. Of course they were. No one would use their real name to scam someone. Did you know about Emma? He asked. Well, I kind of knew. So what happened? When I heard the details from my husband, here's what happened. About a year ago, he met a woman named Emma at a hostess club. It seems my husband, who wanted children, had been talking about it incessantly during their conversations. Then Emma said, I can give birth to your child, and things progressed from there. They gradually got closer. My husband started going to the club almost every weekday, and they went on dates outside the club on weekends, often returning there afterward. He ended up spending his savings of $110,000 from his single days. But Emma was so kind, he said, she never asked for expensive things on our dates or demanded fancy stuff at the club. She was nothing like those shady hostesses you hear about. She didn't care about designer items or jewelry. She just wanted to drink at the club. She was diligent and sincere about her work. Since we had both kept our hands off each other's savings from our single days, I had no idea about any of this. Well, it was my husband's money, so I thought he could spend it however he liked, but I never imagined he'd spend such a huge amount. Then Emma finally showed her true colors. I want to get married, but I have debts. I need to repay them, and it's about $12,000. My husband promised to take on Emma's debt and transferred the money. They started living together right after our divorce, but Emma worked nights and rarely came home. Then she quit her job and disappeared. Of course, she took the money with her. What a complete idiot. I'm starting to feel sorry for myself for being married to such a person for 20 years. Did you get a promissory note? A what? My ex-husband looked confused. You lent her money, right? Didn't you sign anything? We were getting married, so we didn't bother with that. Then you basically gave her the money, didn't you? I, I did. In this case, it means that you gave Emma $120,000 in goodwill. This woman must be quite skilled. In the case of a gift, a gift tax is imposed if the amount exceeds $11,000 per year. In some cases, the items received are taxed. So, Emma was given only $12,000 in cash, not goods, and disappeared, and it was split into two separate parts over the year. That way didn't exceed the annual $11,000 limit, so she didn't have to pay taxes. My husband thought Emma was a good girl for not wanting expensive items, 
but it turns out she just knew her way around the law. So what should I do? Well, you could consult a lawyer, but of course it'll cost you. With that, my husband slumped his shoulders. I've exhausted my savings from my single days and the woman I love left me. Plus, I've already told my company about remarrying, so I can't exactly say I'm not getting married now. I even boasted about marrying a young wife. Well, it's his own fault. I thought that but didn't say anything to my husband. You look so pathetic. Kate, I messed up. Please come back to me. I realized it after you left. You were the only one thinking about me. I don't need children anymore. I'll let you do whatever you want. Weren't you lonely all this time? Does my husband still misunderstand that I love him? It's been over six months since I moved on, so I confronted him with reality. You're bringing this up a year later? Isn't it a little too late for regrets now? Kate, are you going to abandon me? Didn't you initiate the breakup in the first place? Kate, you're the only one I can rely on. My husband looked utterly worn out. I decided to show in a little mercy. Can't be helped, huh? Should I call a lawyer? I know, Kate. Thank you. You really are. My husband was deeply moved, tears welling up in his eyes. Then Noah, a lawyer from my company, arrived at the cafe. Noah, over here. Kate, who is this? An acquaintance. Seems like he's in a bit of trouble. Is that so? Nice to meet you. I'm Noah. My ex-husband looked puzzled by our strangely intimate behavior. We've been dating for six months now. By the way, what was it you wanted to consult about? As I said that, my ex-husband seemed completely lost. Oh, well, I, I have to go now. With a start, my ex-husband said that and hurriedly left, as if escaping. In the end, without the money to ask a lawyer for help, my ex-husband had to resign himself to his fate. Rumors were circulating at his workplace about the poor guy who was abandoned by his remarriage partner and ignored by his ex-wife. The world really is small. I never imagined that someone from my ex-husband's company would be at that cath, listening to our conversation from start to end. I heard from the grapevine that he's desperately trying to find someone to spend his old age with now that he's alone. What was that about? Later, Noah asked me, and I told him everything. I'm sorry for causing trouble. Actually, so that's what happened. You've been through a lot, Kate. My claim of being in a relationship with Noah was a blatant lie. I asked him to play along as a favor. I'm sorry for all the trouble. It's okay. I'm glad I could help. Anyway, do you have plans after this? Huh. If you're free, how about grabbing a meal together? I never dreamed of such a turn of events waiting for me, and I panicked. Starting afresh in my mid-forties, not a bad beginning at all. Yes, I'd love to. I couldn't shake the feeling that a bright future awaited me. I did not feel that way.